みなさんお久しぶりですこんにちは朝倉優です If you subscribe my channel I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart because my channel just got 20k subscribers So、uh, I uploaded a new intro video as well. So if you have time, go check it out. <laughs> okay, so a couple weeks ago, I took a train called Amtrak、uh, down to San Diego to visit my friends. This line on, in Southern California that kind of goes alongside the coastline from、uh, San Luis Obispo to San Diego. Yes, <laughs> so it has like beautiful scenery. Like, you see the ocean like right next to the train track, you know? And it's been on my bucket list for a while because I love train. I thought about it when you are in a、uh, you know, different country, different city, we have a、uh, you know, different transportation system. and Here in Southern California, we just drive to everywhere, you know? And you're probably wondering, like, what you can do to travel around inside Japan. I made a lesson a long time ago. It's lesson 11、uh, how to travel in Japan. And I'm sorry if you look at the video. Uh, it was like years ago, and I didn't have a good camera, and light was like I was just using the room light, so the screen is very yellowish. I am so sorry. But what I was saying is, yeah, it was okay <laughs> back then. Yeah, so I think you can learn how to you know, take a train or what to do at the station and airport, etc. But I never talked about. This car situation in Japan. So, today I want to talk about how to drive a car in Japanese. Alright, first thing first, I'm gonna answer the biggest question Do you have to drive in Japan? The answer is no. It's not like Los Angeles. Yes, Los Angeles, it's hard to move around with a train and bus. I mean, we got Uber right now, but it's costly. In Japan, no. We have a great、uh, public transportation system. Then also, I find driving in Japan is very challenging. Well, I mean, they say they drive on the the wrong side of the road, which is not the wrong side, it's just the opposite side. We drive. On the left side of the road, therefore, the driver's seat is on the right corner of front right corner is the driver's seat. So it's the opposite from a lot of countries. Where else do you drive the same way? Is it England, right? Yes. So that's number one. And when you see the signs, obviously, they are written in Japanese. And even if you Unless you're like really comfortable, like take a look and understand it. You know, you have to read the signs. So, considering all the trouble, I would say like don't, you don't have to at all. However, you know, you're comfortable with driving and reading signs. And yeah, it must be fun because you can move around at your own pace and. There are, especially if you're going to countryside, yeah, there are places that not, they don't, you know, the bus doesn't go. So, I, and if you're maybe、uh, traveling as a family or group, yeah, it's a good way to, you know, enjoy the country. So, you don't have to, but if you want to, yes, definitely go right ahead. So, as of six months ago, when I went to Japan, I had to get this, uh, International driver's permit from AAA. If you're in, in America, you can go to AAA. My research says there is no such thing as international driver's license. Well, in Japan, we say like, Kokusai、uh, Unten Menkyo Sho. So, Menkyo Sho is license, but English translation is still international driver's permit. International driving permit? I forgot which one. But it is permit. So basically, we only have permit 
to to drive outside your country if somebody says oh i have a driver's like international driver's license is valid everywhere it couldn't be it could be fake that's what my resource said. If you know anything else, just write down in the comment. But as far as I know, you have a valid license in your own country and you have a permit that actually translates what your driver's license is. Then they uh, show the authority of other countries like, hey, this person is a legit driver. So you please uh, allow them to drive in your country. That's what it does international driver's permits so that's what you need if you are planning to live in japan that's another story we have to you have to uh, go get a license in japan but we're going to talk about this later because i went through it and that's <sighs> yeah but if you are traveling yes please uh, visit uh, the local facility that provides international driver's permits even if you're not driving, yes, yeah, like public transportation, or I was gonna say, maybe you can rent a bike. When we say bike in American English, that means uh, like a bicycle. If you say bike, bike in Japan, that means motorcycle. So you wanna say jitensha. Jitensha is the, the one that you have to pedal. <laughs> so I think when I'm at home, I use bus, train, and if you're like at the local, either walk or I'll just take a bike. It's very popular and it's very convenient. It's uh, environmentally friendly. And for cars, I mean, inside the city, parking is pretty expensive or maybe not available. So you wanna double check if you're staying at the hotel or a friend's place. You know, even if you rent a car, is there a parking space? You probably want to double check before you plan to rent a car. So anyway, so driving in Japan is not only the <laughs> sides are different and their roads tend to be very narrow. I mean, think about it. It's the size, the whole country is the size of California. Right, and then we have to have the population of those states. Yes. So all the roads, especially like old ones, are really small. And you'll be surprised there are a lot of like small cars in Japan. But they're cute though. So it is another challenge. Uh if you are not familiar with uh driving like inside the city city, it's it could be a little bit intimidating first. So if I say that. So the stick <laughs> shift, we call it a uh, manual. So it's manually operated and versus automa, which is automatic. It's the stick shift. Uh, manual versus automa. When you are actually applying to get a license, there is a difference. The, my first Japanese license, I actually had to drive a stick shift because that's what my dad had. And if I only got automatic limited, I restricted, I wouldn't be able to drive my dad's car. Here in America, we don't have it. It's just up to you which one you want to drive. And I, I seriously, like I was crying to, to learn how to drive stick shift because it's uh, it, it can be a little bit complicated and all my friends are like just driving automatic it's like why can't i just drive automatic it's just the two pedals and it's fun you know my dad is like this is a real car and <laughs> i years later i am glad my dad was like insisted on me driving a stick shift because i uh got a uh, motorcycle license here and I mean I know there are automatic motorcycles now but usually they're still like stick shift the same concept so I got the concept like you know once I got on it but some people never drove stick shift they're like what is the clutch so I am glad right now but 
if you go rent a car, I would say, unless you request stick shift, yeah, they usually give you automatic. So don't worry about it. And the they're not strict with the international driver's permit, but when it comes to getting an actual license in Japan, that will be uh, not an issue, but you know, they need to distinct those two. Um, so just FYI, if you're planning to live in Japan, yes, we do have what we call DMV. <laughs> uh, then, but the, the thing is here, how I got it was, huh? Yeah, I came here and the first like one month or so I need, I used the international permit. Then I practiced how to drive here with my friend's car. And I went to DMV and took a driving test there and a riding test. In Japan, yes, you can take the test at DMV, but, uh, but I think most of the people actually, they go to school first, driving school, which has like excellent programs. Then they do the actual driving test there. They are approved by the government, so you can actually skip the, the actual driving test. Uh, uh, they give you sort of like certificate, right? So you take that and go take the writing test. So that's how they take the driver's license. Uh, so if you're living there, thinking about getting a driver's license, yes, then just, you know, think about the option of enrolling yourself in one of those schools. Like, this is not in Japan, like for all the drivers all around the world. Safety, number one. Safety, number one. Anzen unten. Anzen is safe, unten is driving. Anzen unten. Yes, this is a number one rule. I don't want to get in an accident. It can be fatal. So don't do anything crazy. Don't do anything anything that is illegal. Then there are some violations, which is ihan means violation. The most common one is speed or ihan, like speeding. Uh, I think you get ticketed, of course, fine. Uh, bakking, you have to pay. Then also, I think, well, maybe for not uh, not for the international permits, but if you have the actual driver's license, they got this like a point system. So every violation you make, they take up the point. Then if you have certain points taken out, like you get suspended or your license is revoked, I think. So yeah, you want to be careful. Shingo mushi. Shingo mushi, ignoring the traffic lights. Yeah, shingo is light, uh, and mushi is to ignore, right? So that's another common one. So this is a very serious topic. Inshu unten, inshu unten, in drink, shu, alcohol, unten, driving. So that's a driving under influence. It's, it's been always, I mean, serious. This is like basically driving, taking a risk of taking other people's life as well. So it is felony here in America. Then I think it's felony in Japan as well. Kenmon, yes, Kenmon is basically like a checking point. It does, you will see it randomly throughout Japan. So here you go, be careful, okay? So don't drink and drive. That's why we have good transportation system, public, and not too many Ubers. But taxi is great, uh, they're reliable. I, I had a license in Japan and I moved here shortly after. So my driving, most of my experience is in here in America. So for me, my natural instinct is to be on the right side of the, uh, the road. And so, I try to drive because my dad wanted me to drive when we're taking a road trip. It's just when you, I turn the corner, I instinctively, like my instinct says, stay on the right. So if you're on a straight line, yeah, I stay on my left. But when I turn, 
I, sometimes my brain goes, which side should I be on? You know, and it just confused me a couple of times. I never got in an accident, you know, so, but I was like making super slow turn so that I make sure I'm on the, the right side, which means left. Yeah. I mean, right, like correct side. <laughs> See, I'm confusing myself. So yes, on the left side. So just be careful because driving is almost like your natural, like a second natural instinct. Now, by now, you're probably driving without thinking, right? Like which side am I on? Like what to do with the shift and the brake? And it's, it's like, it, your body moves automatically so please be careful when you're driving in different countries especially the rules are so different your body might say one thing but you gotta be paying attention so i hope you have a safe trip if you're going to japan and hope you have fun well thank you for watching and i will see you in my next video bye bye